the stories of historic British Town and its garrison as told by its history and architecture, its urban plan of winding streets that recall an era of quaintness, have all come together to support a heritage that can be exploited for developmental purposes. While noting that the inputs into this historic heritage have not been without pain and shame due to the presence of the institution of slavery, we are cognizant, cognizant of the resilience of our enslaved ancestors who suffered and the support of those who sought to improve their plight. Their contribution to this building and to building this nation must never be forgotten and it's worthy of commendation. This evening's occasion, which marks the opening of the Synagogue Redevelopment Project, in my view, brings this chronicle together in a very unique way. My conclusion is based on the fact that the scope of this project, whether intended or not, takes it beyond what its name may connote. I see the occasion this evening as one that in essence memorializes groups of people and events that have been accommodated in this section of our heritage property and this should not be lost in this celebration. The Jewish community and indeed the Jewish synagogue proclaimed as one of the of Barbados.org's seven wonders of Barbados had its beginnings in the 17th century, 1654 to be exact. And that, of course, I'm referring to the synagogue itself. It has its perilous moments, having been destroyed by a hurricane in 1831. It was rebuilt only to fall into a state of disrepair. It was rescued by the Jewish community in 1983 and restored to what we see today. This restoration of this National Trust protected building ushered in another institution, the Need Israel Museum. Our Jewish friends had every reason to celebrate this restoration as it served as a reminder that Barbados was a place of refuge as they fled the persecution encountered in Brazil. The synagogue was indeed a place of worship. The museum spoke to their identity. And this evening, this redeveloped project takes that restoration to yet another level. Located in the vicinity was another important building known as Cod's House, as you've heard this evening. Built as, a, as an old Quaker cemetery lot, it became known as the New Town Hall and was the meeting place of Parliament in the 1800s. As such, it provided the space where important laws were enacted. Among those historic pieces of legislation were the Emancipation Act in 1834 and the Apprenticeship Act in 1838. Those actions changed the course of history on this island as a significant group of individuals went from being categorized as chattel to being called rightfully human beings. Unfortunately, there is no building to be restored as the structure that constituted the building was demolished in 1985 to make way for yet another structure, the site of which was later relocated. The developers have however decided to memorize the site with the erection of a very important monument. I submit that in some way, more ways than one, that site is one of the most hallowed spots in Barbados. <coughs> this is so that despite being a work in progress, as the journey is not yet completed, the Cos House site will forever be ingrained in the Freedom Corridor of Barbados, walked by black Barbadians. This evening, there's also a reason for black Barbadians to celebrate. The other buildings to be restored, such as the old fire station and the artisan workshop, also carry their messages. The fire station symbolizes preservation. It is the duty of our firemen to protect buildings from being destroyed by fire or at the very least, to minimize damage. 
It is therefore the duty of all Barbadians to preserve and care for this restoration project. Let us break the cycle of poor maintenance and the lack of pride of our historic buildings and by extension our city. On the other hand, the artisan workshop speaks to industry and it speaks to employment. These buildings were important hubs for our shoemakers in Barbados. They primarily repaired shoes and gave them a new lease on life. They were also in the restoration business and made it a livelihood as well. I must say that this restoration is truly a phenomenal and of course represents an outstanding example of the very high standard of what restorative work on our historic sites ought to be.